So this is Wayne and he walks into my office one day and says, I have an idea. I would like to gamify or create a video game out of the story of For Jesus. The siege of For Jesus that was fought in Mombasa in the 16th century between the Portuguese and the Omani Arabs. I thought the idea was epic. And I say, what do you need? And Wayne says, I need the skills, resources, and the support. Something told me he had not gone through formal education. And I looked at him closely and asked, what else do you need? And he says, food. So, there was a hungry stomach, but there is a hungry mind as well. Who was it that said, stay hungry, stay foolish? Steve Jobs. How many other hungry-minded Waynes are out there with fantastic ideas? You see, as Kenyans, we have a solid appetite for technology and proud of it too. Even our kangas, the, the printed fabric out there, bears Swahili words. How many women have come across kangas that say, ukini diliti, when zako atani downloadi? <laughs> right? That's a popular kanga, most hot kanga out there right now. So tech innovation hubs in Kenya, collectively known as the Silicon Savannah, are already abuzz with conversations. Digital transformation, artificial intelligence, robotics, big data, nanotechnology, blockchain. You must be hearing these every day in our newspapers. 5G connectivity is almost here. But today, this evening, let's go beyond the buzzwords. Let's have the more difficult conversations. We are ranked the third most innovative country in sub-Saharan Africa. In 2007, we gave the world a revolutionary platform to transfer money through a mobile phone. The world knows that as M-Pesa, one of the most successful solutions Kenya has ever given to the world. But we cannot afford to sit back. We need more solutions. We need to inspire a culture of innovation. These were sporadic successes one of successes. It's been more than 10 years since M-Pesa. When is the next M-Pesa coming? One billion of us in Africa, 50 million in Kenya, 10 million millennials in Kenya, probably studying and skilling for jobs that will not exist in the next 10 years. If indeed our wealth lies in our people. And we are to achieve our demographic dividend, being a young continent. We need to harness the innovation potential of our youth starting today. I remember the day I welcomed the Seacom fiber ship to Mombasa. It was a very exciting time. There was a heightened sense of potential the world was opening up to Africa. This was 2009. A decade later, has Africa reciprocated to the world? By and large, we remain consumers rather than becoming creators of digital solutions and content. Has connectivity really taken us to the promised land? Say the undersea cable is plugged out today. Do we plunge into darkness? Does the rest of the world really look forward to technology, to solutions made in Africa? Imagine the next mobile phone 
can be invented right here in Kenya. Do we look forward to those days? We are connected as a country, as a continent, but we are constrained. Poverty, hunger, unemployment, underemployment, and all the social ills that go with it still plague us. Inequality remains. What are the usual excuses you read about? We don't have infrastructure, we don't have funding, policy and governance, the electricity grid, name it. Am I the only one here in this audience missing the point? For that one billion, what is the missing piece of the puzzle that we just cannot see and it's right in front of us? So here is my story, as African as can be. I was born and raised in Mombasa in the 70s and 80s. And I always wanted to become an aeronautical engineer for NASA. None of my 844 subjects and none of my teachers even touched on rockets and rocket science. The only thing I could come closest to was flying paper planes and paper rockets in my nursery class. I moved on to Starhe Boys Center, Nairobi, one of the finest schools in Kenya. My choice of extracurricular activity was a computer club that was being run by volunteers from Australia. They would come once in a while and do some hands-on and skills training for students there. And here, not through classroom lessons and training, but through hands-on skills transfer, I discovered the calling of my life. I fell in love with computer programming, coding. This was my game changer. Mrs. Kangete, my English class teacher, one day caught me coding in class, writing lines of code in my English exercise book. She had no idea what I was doing. So I was taken into detention for two hours after school. What I was actually doing was creating a sports car racing game for the Apple IIe computer so my friends could play. She didn't understand that language. Two years later, the school awarded me the prestigious Wilson Shield of Computing, and I proceeded to the US, not for aeronautical engineering, but for computer sciences. What then is the missing piece of the puzzle for all of us here as a country and as a continent? The future of business, whether it's small business, medium business, or corporate, is fast changing. The workplace is changing, jobs are changing, as we usher in what is being dubbed as the Industrial Revolution 4.0. I will remind you that we had 1.0, the steam engine, 2.0, mass production and electricity, 3.0, computers and internet. We are now about to usher in Industrial Revolution 4.0. It is cloud computing, robotics, artificial intelligence, internet of things, big data. Are we prepared for IR 4.0? Our game changer, therefore, and this is my thesis, is to reshape the fundamental way that we impart teaching and learning, education, to prepare ourselves for the Industrial Revolution 4.0. Now, sadly, our education systems have been hangovers from the colonial era. They've just been upgraded from traditional education systems. A typical example is our own 844 in Kenya, which incidentally is undergoing review as we speak. 
but our education systems provide skill sets that were befitting 1.0 and 2.0. Those are way past us. What are we preparing our next generation for? In fact, 65% of children who will be entering school this year will work in a job that has not been invented yet. 65%. That is not a small statistic. So those skill sets made sense. They don't make sense anymore. Classrooms and desks still look like assembly lines in a factory plant. Bells and clocks remind us to stop what you are doing and move on to the next period. Thus, blocking a young innovator's mindset, challenging the creative process of the mind. So how do we reconstruct our education system? Can technology help us perform a leapfrog from 844 to 4.0, education 4.0, a more relevant, a more digitalized, a more futuristic system for teaching and learning across formal, non-formal and informal pathways. As Kenya and Africa in general, we have proven performance in leapfrogging. Look at what we did to telecommunications. The mobile phone that you have in your hand did not have to go through any infrastructure phase to come up with it. Our uptake was phenomenal. Look at mobile banking. Look at digital payments, money transfers, e-government. If we could do all that leapfrogging for all those other sectors, what happened with education? So I'm going to define education 4.0 quickly. It is a response to the needs of the next industrial revolution that will actually combine human and technology to make sense of the digital economy that we are already in. It is more collaborative, personalized, global. It is basically anytime, anywhere. Simply put, we are transforming traditional schooling to become knowledge and innovation ecosystems. So a transformed school to become an information ecosystem or an innovation ecosystem can spur intellectual contribution, not only to our continent, but to the world. Innovation capacity, startup businesses, employment, solving problems locally, creating solutions globally, and eventually that all leads to wealth creation. So it takes a village to raise a child, but it takes an ecosystem to scale an innovation. We need today the enablers, the disruptors, the movers, the shakers of the industry sector, sorry, of the education sector, to think through leapfrogging 844 to education 4.0. Education 4.0 is very unique in that it will take learning to the masses and to the grassroots as well. And isn't that what we want? You can have kiosks, solar kiosks, in the rural areas, powering learning and teaching, as long as they are connected to the cloud. Your mobile device is an access to learning and teaching as well. So distance, language, access, and medium will no longer be barriers to learning and teaching across the divide. We have Google translators today, and what stops us from Google translating all the ethnicities of Kenya, for example. So with a focus on STEM, TVET, entrepreneurship and innovation, we are ready for new business and jobs. Two examples I will give you. A skilled Akamba artisan, expert at carving, or an experienced seafarer from Lamu, experts at fishing should be able to impart their skill and knowledge 
to an apprentice sitting across the world, across the country, as long as they have access, as long as they have tools, as long as they are connected to the cloud. So we need to connect educators and learners across the divide for the 21st century, and that is Education 4.0. Upskilling, reskilling, and lifelong learning will become necessary choices for all of us sitting in this room. So I, the boy from Sterehe, could not become a NASA engineer, but chose IT instead. And, of course, returned to Kenya. I seek to promote and build innovation ecosystems, hand in hand with traditional schooling, to move towards an education 4.0 model. From early childhood through continuous learning in the workplace, so that people like Wayne and millennials and post-millennials can become the next Elon Musk, can work for NASA as well, and, get, and can get all those opportunities that they actually deserve and can work towards. For our demographic dividend to really, really pay off and innovation to become truly accessible all the way to the grassroots, it is time to leapfrog from Education 844 to Education 4.0. This is the missing piece in our puzzle for the one billion that we are talking about today. Thank you.